Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SwahiliPod101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Ham Jamboni. Mimi ni Medina. Hi everybody. I'm Medina. Welcome to swahilipod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Swahili. In the last lesson, we learned how to thank people by saying asante. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Kenya. Uko tayari? Are you ready? Tuanze. So let's get started. The most commonly used informal greeting is habari. Ha ba re. Habari means hi or hello. We use it when we meet people. We can use this greeting with friends or relatives 
but also with people we don't know. We used this phrase in lesson one. Do you remember? And do you remember what the formal way of greeting people is? Shikamo. Shikamo. Do you also remember that habari can be used both in formal and casual settings? During the evening, we say, Habari ya jioni. Habari ya jioni. Jioni is Swahili for evening. So, habari ya jioni means good evening. Habari and habari ya jioni are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these greetings again. Instead, when living in both formal and informal situations, Kenyan people say, Kwaheri. Kwaheri. Kwaheri means goodbye. Finally, in Swahili, we have an expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. Tuonane tena. Tuonane tena. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Swahili. Let's review them all again. When greeting someone in an informal way, remember to say habari. When greeting someone in a formal situation, you say shikamo. When leaving in either a formal or informal situation, say tuonane tena. It's easy, isn't it? Now, it's time for Medina's insights. In formal situations, Kenyans commonly greet each other by shaking hands. But if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug each other. Don't be afraid to do it with your Kenyan friends. It's normal. In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase unongea kingereza. Do you already know it? I'll be waiting with the answer in our next Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. Until then, tuonane. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Today, we are going to look at the top 25 phrases in Swahili. Let's have fun. Jambo. Hello. Okay, the first phrase is Jambo. Hello. Jambo. Jambo is one of the most simple greetings in Kenya. Anyone can use it at any time. In fact, we love using it with tourists. Please visit Kenya and just say Jambo. Habariza asubui. Good morning. Okay, the next phrase is Habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza asubui. We often wake up tired sometimes in the morning, but it doesn't cost to say habari za subui, good morning. Habari za mchana, good afternoon. The next phrase is habari za mchana, good afternoon. Habari za mchana, you know, in the afternoon when you meet someone, you're like, oh, habari za mchana. Habari means news, so you're trying to ask someone, okay, how is your afternoon? Tell me anything that is happening in your afternoon. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Yes, it's time to sleep. I th sometimes look forward to that time. And you know, I, I, I look forward to saying good night to my friends or to my family or to my whatever person who is there. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako. Nani, it's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Mimi naitwa. I'm Mimi naitwa Medina. My name is Medina. Mimi naitwa Medina. Now, this is actually an answer to the previous question, Jina Lako Nani, what's your name? Now, you have to keep this in mind that, you know, if you use this word frequently, you'll be able to tell people about your name. You'll be able to tell people your name. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. I mean, it's really polite. I always feel like energized when someone says, nice to meet you. <laughs> it can be awkward when someone says, oh, I did not want to meet you, you know, <laughs> but we rarely hear that. 
Just use that word, nice to meet you. Habari gani? How are you? Habari gani? How are you? Habari in Swahili means news. And gani means what? So what news? Actually, what you're trying to ask here is like, what, what do you have? I mean, what is all about your life right now in a polite way, you know? Then someone will say, Mzuri, or it's okay. They will not go on telling you whatever is happening all around, but you know, they'll just say it's fine or not good, you know? So it's an important phrase. Niko salama, asante, na wewe? I am fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante. Fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante means, oh, I'm fine. Literally, that is what it means. I'm fine, thank you. Then you, you take it back. What about you? You are concerned about the person who is asking you, you know? If you just say, oh, I'm fine, thanks. Then you keep quiet, you know? I mean, we do so that sometimes, but you know, sometimes you want to show concern. So you ask, na wewe, and you? Tafadhali, please. Tafadhali, please. It's a magic word all around the world. So tafadhali is one of those words that you want to embrace when you visit Kenya. Tafadhali, whenever you're asking a favor, just say tafadhali. Excuse me, tafadhali, tafadhali. That's one great word you need to remember. Asante, thank you. Asante, thank you. It's also one of the magic words that relates to tafadhali, please. You know, asante is like you're appreciating whatever favor you received from someone who did you a favor. So it's also one of those words you, you like to embrace whenever and wherever. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu. Karibu is one of the most common words used in Kenya. For example, when someone knocks your door, you'll say, oh, karibu. That means come in or welcome, actually. Then in some circumstances where someone gives you something, you'll say thank you, right? Now, the person who is giving you will say karibu. Karibu means welcome. So <laughs> it can be a joke, but you know what? You can go and ask them, or you can go and ask as many favors as, as you can because they said karibu. I mean, that's a joke. <laughs> you don't have to take it seriously though. <laughs> Dio, yes. Dio, yes. Dio. Dio is a response. Whenever someone asks a question, you can say Dio if it's a positive answer, I mean, to the question. I mean, it, it depends. You know, there are the yes, no questions. Yeah, that is where it lies. Dio. Umefika Kenya? Dio. Umekula chakula? Dio. Umefika Kenya means, have you arrived in Kenya? You'll say yes, which is Dio. Have you eaten food? Umekula chakula? You'll say Dio. Yes. Hapana. No. Hapana. No. Hapana. Hapana is an answer to the yes, no question. Just like Dio. Dio means yes, as we looked at it previously. Now here it's no. Umefika Kenya? Hapana. Have you arrived in Kenya? No. Umekula chakula? Have you eaten food? No. Hapana. Sour. Okay. Sour. Okay. Sour. Okay. Sawa. Sawa is used to acknowledge that you agree to whatever has been said. For example, you can say, Sawa, nimeelewa maelezo yako. Okay, I've understood the explanation. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. Excuse me. Niwie radhi. This is a very handy word, especially when you want someone to excuse you for something. Niwie radhi. Nawezangalia mzigo wako? Excuse me, can I check your bag? Samahani, I am sorry. Samahani, I am sorry. Samahani. Samahani is also one of those polite words that you really need to remember. It comes handy when you make a mistake. Samahani, nimechelewa. I'm very sorry that I'm late. Nisangapi, what time is it? Nisangapi, what time is it? Nisangapi, of course, you'll want to know time. If you cannot see, see the time, probably there's no wall clock around, or perhaps your phone is off to check, or perhaps 
you forgot your wristwatch. You'll ask your friend, Ni sangapi? Msala ni wapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani ni wapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani ni wapi? Now, for real, you may need this word really, especially if nature keeps calling on you, you know? You may want to ask, hey, tafadali, msalani ni wapi? Excuse me, where is the restroom? Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. When you're caught up doing something and someone asks for a favor, you may use this word. Just a moment. Subiri kidogo. Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahi ni nini. Now, he there stands for the thing that you want to buy. For example, you can say, Beyahi nguo ni nini. How much is this dress? Saidia, help. Saidia, help. Saidia. Saidia! Imagine you're drowning. What will you do? You'll shout, Saidia! Help! When you're in trouble, I mean, this word comes in handy. I think you may want to use it. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. After you meet with your friend, you have a chat with how him, you'll definitely say, bye, see you later, when you're padding. I think it's also in one of those polite words that you may want to add to your list. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. Now, kwaheri reminds me of those toughest moments in my life. You know, when I went abroad to study and my family was back um, in my country, the toughest moments was when we were parting. You know, I will never want to say kwaheri. I will never want to say goodbye. I will never even want to utter it out, but I will just say it with tears rolling down my, my cheeks. Yeah, kwaheri, it's a good word to use whenever you're padding. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui. This is a word that you'll, you, you'll use when you acknowledge that for sure, you're not sure about the answer to the question or to the situation that is happening at the moment. Some people think it's impolite to say sijui, especially when you're asking for directions. They'll try to give you information which might be wrong to show that they are polite. So you got to be careful. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, do not forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com. Kwaheri, see you again. Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at swahilipod101.com. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahilipod 101, Swahili Top Words. Today, we are going to look at 10 questions you should know. Welcome and have fun. Jinalako ni nani? Jinalako ni nani? What's your name? To answer that, you'll say, Jinalangu ni Medina. If you're Juma, you'll say, Jinalangu ni Juma. My name is Juma. Uhaligani. Uhaligani. How are you? To answer that, you'll say, Jema, I'm fine. Or fine? Uhaligani, fine. I'm fine. Ulizaliwa wapi? Ulizaliwa wapi? Where are you from? To answer that, I'll give the name of my country. Kenya. Ulizaliwa wapi? Kenya. If you're born in the United States, you'll say, America. Ulizaliwa wapi? America. Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? When is your birthday? To answer that, you'll say, Siku yangu ya kuzaliwa ni Aprili tarehe tatu. 
My birthday is April 3rd. Unaishi wapi? Unaishi wapi? Where do you live? Ninaishi Nairobi. I live in Nairobi. Nairobi is quite a big place. Actually, it's a province in itself. So you won't say you're living in the whole Nairobi. We have to be specific. So if you live in Langata, you will say Ninaishi Langata. That is when we will assume you're in Nairobi and you're talking within people in Nairobi. They will understand where Langata is. But if you're out of Nairobi, you'll say Naishi Nairobi Langata to just be specific. Unafanya kazi wapi? Unafanya kazi wapi? Where do you work? To answer this, you'll say Jijini Mombasa. Again, Jijini Mombasa. Mombasa is the name of the place. Jijini means town. So if you're working in Kisumu, you'll say Jijini Kisumu, just to be specific. I work in Mombasa. I work in Kisumu. Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Where did you learn Swahili? For that, you can answer by saying katika swahilipod101.com from swahilipod101.com J. Unapenda chakula cha Kenya? J. Unapenda chakula cha Kenya? Do you like Kenyan food? To answer that, you will say, Ndio, napenda. Yes, I love it. Yes, I like Kenyan food. In Kenya, we have varieties of food, and I'm sure you like it. The most staple food in Kenya is ugali. Ugali, ugali is like cornbread. It's made from white flour, white corn flour. It's not very hard. Something like rice, but you know, in the flour form, but cooked. You don't eat the flour, it's cooked. So it's cornbread. Now you eat cornbread with different kinds of stews. You can eat it with a bean stew, beef stew, name any kind of stew. And then we also have vegetables. I'm sure you'll like it. Try it out. Umeshawaikuwa Kenya? Umeshawaikuwa Kenya? Have you been to Kenya? You can answer this by saying, Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. No, it's my first time. This is a very common question to tourists who visit Kenya. So, be prepared. And it will really sound cool if you can answer in Swahili. Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. Hii unauza pesa ngapi? Hii unauza pesa ngapi? How much is this? To answer that, you can say, shilingi kumi za Kenya. Kumi is the price, so you can keep changing that and say shilingi hamsini za Kenya, 50 shillings, Kenya shillings. This will be a very useful phrase to use when you're going shopping. Of course, I'm sure you're going to buy souvenirs for your family members back in your country. So having this word on your fingertips will be very useful. Yay, we're done! Thank you so much for keeping up with me until the end of this lesson. Do you remember all those questions? They're very handy and I really recommend that you have them at your fingertips whenever you visit Kenya. Now, if you liked our lesson, do not forget to give us a thumbs up down there and leave your comments. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com for more lesson. See you next time. Kwa heri tuonane. Bye. Mwanamume na mwanamke wanatazama orodha ya chakula hotelini. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Utaagiza nini? Pizza linaonekana tamu. Nadhani nitaliagiza. Nilikula pizza jana kwa hivyo. Sawa. Hamburger je? Chaguo bora. Nitakiagiza. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Mwanamume na mwanamke wanatazama orodha ya chakula hotelini. Mwanamume ataagiza nini? Utaagiza nini? Pizza linaonekana tamu. Nadhani nitaliagiza. Nilikula pizza jana kwa hivyo. Sawa. Hamburger je? Chaguo bora. Nitakiagiza. 
mwanamme anapiga simu kwa afisi ya daktari. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari saa ngapi? Aise, nikusaidieje? Unafunga saa ngapi leo? Tunafunga saa mbili lakini ufike kabla ya saa moja unusu tafadhali. Sawa, asante. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari saa ngapi? Mwanamme anapiga simu kwa afisi ya daktari. Anapaswa awe kwa afisi ya daktari saa ngapi? Aise, nikusaidieje? Unafunga saa ngapi leo? Tunafunga saa mbili lakini ufike kabla ya saa moja unusu tafadhali. Sawa, asante. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Want to speak real Swahili from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SwahiliPod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Swahili listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamke yupo kwenye duka kubwa. Atenda kwenye gorofa la ngapi? Samahani, nguo za watoto ziko wapi? Ziko kwenye gorofa la tano na la sita. Je, una nguo za watoto wachanga pia? Ndiyo, tuna nguo nyingi za watoto wachanga kwenye gorofa la sita. Asante sana. Nitaenda kuangalia huko. Atenda kwenye gorofa la ngapi? Mwanamke yupo kwenye duka kubwa. Atenda kwenye gorofa la ngapi? Samahani, nguo za watoto ziko wapi? Ziko kwenye gorofa la tano na la sita. Je, una nguo za watoto wachanga pia? Ndiyo, tuna nguo nyingi za watoto wachanga kwenye gorofa la sita. Asante sana. Nitaenda kuangalia huko. Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Mwanamme ana miaka mingapi sasa? Sikukuu yako ya kuzaliwa ni hivi karibuni sana. Ndiyo, 
ni siku baada ya kesho. Unaenda kuwa na miaka ngapi? Nageuka miaka sitini. Hongera. Wacha tushereke. Asante sana. Nashukuru sana. Mwanamme ana miaka mingapi sasa? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Mwanamme ana miaka mingapi sasa? Siku kuu yako ya kuzaliwa ni hivi karibuni sana. Ndio. Ni siku baada ya kesho. Unaenda kuwa na miaka ngapi? Nageuka miaka sitini. Hongera. Wacha tushereke. Asante sana. Nashukuru sana. Mwanamke anaangalia nguo kwenye duka la nguo. Ataenda kununua nini? Sketi ya blue na nyeupe. Nazipenda zote. Ndio. Sketi nyeupe inauzwa vizuri. Ya blue ni gali kidogo. Naam. Lakini inakufaa. Hmm. Siwezi kumudu zote mbili. Nitanunua ile nyeupe. Sawa. Asante sana. Ataenda kununua nini? Mwanamke anaangalia nguo kwenye duka la nguo. Ataenda kununua nini? Sketi ya blue na nyeupe. Nazipenda zote. Ndio. Sketi nyeupe inauzwa vizuri. Ya blue ni gali kidogo. Naam. Lakini inakufaa. Hmm. Siwezi kumudu zote mbili. Nitanunua ile nyeupe. Sawa. Asante sana. It's my dinner again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101, Swahili Top Words. Today, we are going to look at 10 questions you should know. Welcome and have fun. Jina lako ni nani? Jina lako ni nani? What's your name? To answer that, you'll say, Jina langu ni Medina. If you're Juma, you'll say, Jina langu ni Juma. My name is Juma. Uhali gani? Uhali gani? How are you? To answer that, you'll say, Jema, I'm fine. Or fine? Uhali gani fine? I'm fine. Ulizaliwa wapi? Ulizaliwa wapi? Where are you from? To answer that, I'll give the name of my country. Kenya. Ulizaliwa wapi? Kenya. If you're born in the United States, you'll say, America. Ulizaliwa wapi? America. Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? When is your birthday? To answer that, you'll say, Siku yangu ya kuzaliwa ni Aprili tarehe tatu. My birthday is April 3rd. Unaishi wapi? Unaishi wapi? Where do you live? Ninaishi Nairobi. I live in Nairobi. Nairobi is quite a big place. Actually, it's a province in itself. So you won't say you're living in the whole Nairobi. We have to be specific. So if you live in Langata, you will say, Ninaishi Langata. That is when we will assume you're in Nairobi and you're talking within people in Nairobi. They will understand where Langata is. But if you're out of Nairobi, you'll say, Naishi Nairobi Langata, to just be specific. Unafanya kazi wapi? Unafanya kazi wapi? Where do you work? To answer this, you'll say, Jijini Mombasa. Again, Jijini Mombasa. Mombasa is the name of the place. Jijini means town. So if you're working in Kisumu, you'll say, Jijini Kisumu. Just to be specific, I work in Mombasa. I work in Kisumu. Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Where did you learn Swahili? For that, you can answer by saying, Katika Swahili pod101.com From Swahili pod101.com Jay, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? 
Je, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? Do you like Kenyan food? To answer that, you will say, Ndio, napenda. Yes, I love it. Yes, I like Kenyan food. In Kenya, we have varieties of food, and I'm sure you'll like it. The most staple food in Kenya is ugali. Ugali, ugali is like cornbread. It's made from white flour, white corn flour. It's not very hard. Something like rice, but you know, in the flour form, but cooked. You don't eat the flour, it's cooked. So it's cornbread. Now you eat cornbread with different kinds of stews. You can eat it with a bean stew, beef stew, name any kind of stew. And then we also have vegetables. I'm sure you'll like it. Try it out. Umeshawaikuwa Kenya. Umeshawaikuwa Kenya. Have you been to Kenya? You can answer this by saying, Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. No, it's my first time. This is a very common question to tourists who visit Kenya. So, be prepared. And it will really sound cool if you can answer in Swahili. Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. He unauza pesangapi? He unauza pesangapi? How much is this? To answer that, you can say, shilingi kumi za Kenya. Kumi is the price. So, you can keep changing that and say, shilingi hamsini za Kenya. 50 shillings, Kenya shillings. This will be a very useful phrase to use when you're going shopping. Of course, I'm sure you're going to buy souvenirs for your family members back in your country. So having this word on your fingertips will be very useful. Yes, welcome again. This is Medina. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Top words. Today we are going to look at 10 hardest words to pronounce in Swahili. Badai, later. Badai, later. Badai. For example, you can say, Tuonane badai. See you later. Tu onane baadai. Now, actually, I can understand why it's a little bit difficult word to pronounce because uh, looking back at my nephew, he was at that time around two, three years old. He had a very hard time saying baadai. He used to say badea, badea, which is quite different. But now he made it up. He's okay. He says badai. Changia to contribute. Changia to contribute. Changia. Changia katika mikakati ya mambo maku. To contribute to a greater cause. Changia katika mikakati ya mambo maku. Hakuna matata. No worries. Hakuna matata. No worries. Hakuna matata. Hapa Kenya, hakuna matata. There are no worries here in Kenya. Actually, there's a song that goes, Kenya inchi yetu, hakuna matata. Nchi ya kupendeza, hakuna matata. That means that in our country, there are no worries. It's a lovable countries. There are no worries. Yeah. Hakuna matata is quite a handy word to use. Actually, it's in a song. So just learn the song and you get the word. If you're a fan of Lion King movie, I'm sure you've heard about this phrase. Kiangazi, hot season. Kiangazi, hot season. Kiangazi. Kuna kiangazi sana kaskazini mwanchi. The north part of the country is very dry. Kuna kiangazi sana kaskazini mwanchi. Kipupwe, cool season. Kipupwe, cool season. Kipupwe. Watu hupata homa wakati wa kipupwe. People catch flu during the cool season. Watu hupata homa wakati wa kipupwe. Mchungwa, orange tree. Mchungwa, orange tree. Mchungwa. Nimelala hapa chini ya mti wa mchungwa. I am lying here under an orange tree. Nimelala hapa chini ya mti wa mchungwa. Ngangana to strive. Ngangana to strive. Ngangana. 
Nangangana kuwa wa kwanza. I'm striving to be the first one. Ngangana. Can you try saying it out? Nga, nga, na. Do you realize that you stick your tongue at the back upper part of your mouth and then the voice comes through your nose? Nga, nga, na. Hope you did it. Ngombe, kao. Ngombe, kao. Ngombe. Hawa ni ngombe wawili. Hawa ni ngombe wawili. These are two cows. Ngombe is similar like ngang, ngana. I mean, the way you stick the tongue behind and to the top of your mouth. But now you're using the o sound. You're trying to make the o sound. Try it again. Ngo, ngo, ngombe. Hope you made it. Taka, taka, trash. Taka, taka, trash. Taka, taka. Kutupa, taka, taka. To empty the trash. Kutupa, taka, taka. Now, taka, taka can be used in different ways. For example, if someone says, taka, taka, it will mean something really bad or wasteful or something that is annoying. If someone says, wewe ni taka, taka, it means you're wasteful or you're a waste. So you can use it different ways. But you know what? Don't use it to your friend or someone. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's not a good word to use. In other words, so be careful when you use it. Nyanyasa, oppress. Nyanyasa, oppress. Nyanyasa. Matajiri wana nyanyasa maskini. The rich oppress the poor. Matajiri wana nyanyasa maskini. How are your Swahili listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Ni lini wataenda kupata kuchua? Rafiki yangu amefungua mahali mpya pa kuchua. Mahali pa kuchua? Nataka kwenda. Je, una wakati Jumamosi? Jumamosi nina shughuli. Ni vipi Jumapili? Mahali penyewe hufungwa Jumapili. Na je Juma? Sawa. Ni lini wataenda kupata kuchua? Mwanamme na mwanamke wanaongea. Ni lini wataenda kupata kuchua? Rafiki yangu amefungua mahali mpya pa kuchua. Mahali pa kuchua? Nataka kwenda. Je, una wakati Jumamosi? Jumamosi nina shughuli. Ni vipi Jumapili? Mahali penyewe hufungwa Jumapili. Na je Juma? Sawa. Welcome to swahilipod101.com's Kiswahili kwa dakika tatu. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Swahili. Hamjamboni, mimi ni Medina. Shukran kwa kuungana na mimi katika kipindi hii. Hi everybody, I'm Medina. Thank you for joining me. In this series, you're going to learn basic Swahili expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. And in this first lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Swahili. You learn both an informal and formal way to do it. But unlike many other languages, there is not a very big difference between informal and formal speech in Swahili. First, let's see how Kenyan people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hi, I'm Medina. Nice to meet you. Habari, mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Let's break it down. Start with the greeting. Habari, then mimi ni, which is followed by your name. Next, say the phrase, 
Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. All together it is Habari mimi ni Medina. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And now let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Hello, my name is Medina Maraka. Nice to meet you. Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at these together. It's important to note that habari can be used in both casual and formal settings. However, it is more formal and respectful to use the word shikamo, especially when addressing an older person. Shikamo implies good day or simply hello. You will notice that the section mimi ni for I am changes to jina langu ni Medina for my name is Medina. During a formal self-introduction, it is advisable to mention your last name. So, I will say, my name is Medina Maraka. Here, you will say your full name. Finally, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe is the same for both. This phrase means, nice to meet you. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Swahili is, habari, mimi ni Medina, Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. And the formal way to introduce yourself is Shikamo, jina langu ni Medina Maraka, nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Now, it's time for Medina's insights. When introducing yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Usually, the right hand is slightly supported by the left hand. If you're concerned about politeness, a slight bend forward while shaking the hand adds a sign of respect in the Kenyan business world. However, if you speak too formally, people will think you sound unnatural. In Kenya, simplicity is best. Habari yako? Mzuri sana. Uko mzima? Niko mzima kabisa asante. Habari ya asubuhi. Mzuri mwenzangu, lakini nilikuona wapi? Kwa majina naitwa Fatuma Ali. Nami naitwa Mohamed Joroge. Niko na furaha kukujua. Nimefurahia pia. Nimetumwa na rafiki yako nije nikuone. Haya basi, nikusaidiaje? Asante sana kwa kuja kuniona hospitalini. Karibu sana. Nilivyosikia umejifungua mapacha, niliamua lazima nije. Ah, nashukuru. Nimekuletea zawadi zingine za hawa watoto na zingine zako. Asante sana mwenzangu. Nashukuru. Tafadhali naomba ujue umenikanyaga. Oh, mimi Ndiyo, kwa vidole za mguu. Pole sana. Habari yako? Mzuri sana. Mna chakula ama kinywaji kilicho tayari? Ndiyo. Nikupakulie nini? Je, mna chai ya maziwa? La, lakini tunayo kahawa ya maziwa. Sawa. Nitakuita baadaye. Nipe muda kidogo. Sawa. Welcome. Hello everyone. It's Medina here again with Swahili Top Words. Are you a gift lover? Do you like receiving gifts or do you like giving gifts? Now, if that is you, this lesson is really for you. We're going to learn about 10 gift ideas you must know in Swahili. Welcome and let's have fun. Okay, words. Tarakilishi la paja. Tarakilishi la paja. Our first word is tarakilishi la paja. Laptop. Tarakilishi. La paja. Paja is your lap. Laptop. Asante kwa kunipa tarakilishi la paja. Asante kwa kunipa tarakilishi la paja. Thank you for giving me a laptop. Really, I appreciate it. 
I was dreaming of laptops some years back. You know, technology is changing each 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 and every day, and it is it's really I'm not really sure, but um, it was yesterday while I was thinking about how the world will be in in 40 years to come. I don't know. Maybe there's some there'll be something different from a laptop. Okay, now let's get back um to where I was about laptop. You know, those days when I used to see people with laptops, I was like, oh oh, I really wish I could have one. Thank you for giving me a laptop. Actually, I got one and <laughs> life has become normal again. I think I want more laptops. It never gets enough. I don't know what. Do you feel something like me? Kitabu. Kitabu. Book. Kitabu. Book. Ningependa kusoma kitabu cha hadithi. Ningependa kusoma kitabu cha hadithi. I would like to read a storybook. Kenyans love stories and storytelling. Even before books were invented, Kenyans told stories. And now they're telling stories in writings. We have very famous and popular writers in Kenya. I think of it. Among, of, among them include, uh, who is this? Gugi Thiongo. And one of his books that I like the most is Weep Not Child. Then there's Grace So grace of God and with the grace of God you, you you learn I mean she's gotten into the Kenyan culture and you'll get to know much about the Kenyan culture through her books the promised land is one of those favorite books that I love there's Binyavanga Hainaina the name is quite long but you know what he's a good writer in fact he's he has a very unique writing that even impressed what Oprah Winfrey who took it as one of his book clubs to read books. Get to know the Kenyan cultures by checking out these writers and more of them. Ramani Yadunia. Ramani Yadunia. World map. Ramani Yadunia. World map. Kwa vile unasafiri dunia, shika hi Ramani Yadunia. Kwa vile unasafiri dunia, shika hi Ramani Yadunia. Since you're traveling around the world, have this world map. Would you like to have a world map as a gift? Which one would you like best? The postal one or the globe? Globe in Swahili is called Ardhi. Ardhi technically means earth because the world is earth. Swahili just took it to translate globe to earth. Ardhi. Camera, 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 camera he in a toa picha safi kabisa. Camera he in a toa picha safi kabisa. This camera produces clear pictures. Yeah, if you see me clearly, then I just mean it. Simu ya smartphone. Simu ya smartphone. Smartphone. Simu ya smartphone. Smartphone. He simu ya smartphone haishi moto haraka. He simu ya smartphone haishi moto haraka. This smartphone does not finish charging quickly. Maybe it's time to get a gift. As a smartphone, how so cool would that be? You know, before I got a smartphone, I dreamt. I know it was <laughs> one of those dreams that you want to come true. And honestly, when I got one, it was a dream come true. And I appreciate it up to now. It wasn't really a gift, but I really worked hard to get it <laughs> because I wanted it. Yes, it is It is very convenient, I would say. Smartphones are super convenient, especially in this world and age. I can use smartphone. In fact, when I was at school, I used to write my papers using my smartphone. Sounds strange, but it's true. Whatever I will be going to work, I could write my papers. Woo! Part-time jobbing. Yeah, with papers on the road. Woo! I'll write lots of papers. I'll do my research using my smartphone. I mean, the, it's like the world was with me right on my hands. And, you know, I could chat with my family. I could do, you know, you jungle through a number of things at the same time. 
and your world is just, everything is consolidated. That is very convenient. I appreciate it. It's a dream come true and it's a worthy dream. Worthy dream. It's a high time you get one as a gift. Yeah, I wish you luck. Come see. Come see. Dictionary. Come see. Dictionary. Come see mpia ni pesangapi. Come see mpia ni pesangapi. How much is a new dictionary? Do you think a dictionary is a good gift? Now you ask me, what kind of a dictionary? It could be book dictionary or electronic dictionary. But which one would you like most? Electronic dictionary or book dictionary? Or none at all? You know, I'm saying none at all because some people think dictionary, especially book dictionaries, are outdated. Why? Because they have their phones as an extra memory. <laughs> you just, you want to look for something like, you can say, I want to look for camera. Oh, you go to your phone, you type it, camera, and it comes with all those things. So someone like, oh, I don't need a dictionary. My phone already has a dictionary. I mean, really, for me, I still like, like dictionaries, and especially those paper ones. You know, they're all jet Theoceras, the dictionary, the Oxford English Dictionary. I mean, they, those ones are still on my shelf and I, I'll value them forever. I, I think I, I really love them. I still use them up to now. And as much as I have a phone and a computer and Google as an extra, an extra gadget for my memory, you know? Usafiri Wandege Hadi Kenya. Usafiri Wandege Hadi Kenya. A flight to Kenya. Usafiri wandege hadi Kenya. A flight to Kenya. Nita kupea tiketi ya usafiri wandege hadi Kenya. Nita kupea tiketi ya usafiri wandege hadi Kenya. I will give you a flight ticket to Kenya. How awesome is that gift? Especially if you are abroad. Honestly, you want to go meet your friends. If the flight ticket is, is ranging to like... $1,500. I mean, that's a lot of money. And if someone gives you that as a gift, really, that is awesome. Don't you think so? Vocha ya ununuzi. Vocha ya ununuzi. Shopping voucher. Vocha ya ununuzi. Shopping voucher. Katika kampuni yetu, kila mtu alipea vocha ya ununuzi. Katika kampuni yetu, kila mtu alipewa vocha ya ununuzi. In our company, everyone was given a shopping voucher. You could be one of those lucky ones to get a, a voucher, a shopping voucher from your company. Now, which one would you prefer to buy? Electronic stuff or fashion stuff? Or go, I mean, a shopping voucher will not take you for a picnic. <laughs> you, you can buy stuff to use for a picnic, right? It's you to choose. I wish you luck and... Mm, Enjoy, enjoy those watches in case you, you get them. Use them well. And if you have a friend, please try and get a gift for that friend, you know? Sayam Kono. Sayam Kono. Wristwatch. Sayam Kono. Wristwatch. Ile Sayam Kono ya blue ni maridadi sana. Ile Sayam Kono ya blue ni maridadi sana. That wristwatch is very beautiful. But the wristwatches are quite good. They, they short time and you don't have to go checking your phone every time. Like, what time is it? You know, you just make it easier. You bring your hand here and you see, you don't even have to bring it there. You just a little bit like that. And you, you, you see, you know, you see the time and you're acquainted with whatever is happening as far as time is concerned. Now, do you think it's necessary to have a wristwatch? Mkoba. Mkoba. Wallet. Mkoba. Wallet. Mkoba ni zawadi nzuri sana. Mkoba ni zawadi mzuri sana. A wallet is a good gift. Where is my wallet? I love wallets myself, so whenever I think of buying something for, for someone, especially ladies, I give them wallets and I really go look for those pretty ones. And those ones that I know, you know, I know my friends, so I know 
I know their style. I know whatever thing they like putting in their wallets. You know, those lady, lady, gully thingy in the wallet. Yeah, in the wallet or in the handbag, whatever the thing is. But what I'm trying to say is that wallets are really good gifts. And I don't know about you. Do you wish to have a wallet or just a handbag is enough? Or for men, what do you like? Let us know in the comment section. Thank you again for staying with us throughout this lesson. It was fun to learn about the 10 gift ideas you must know in Swahili, right? We'd like to hear more from you in the comment section. Just type something about the kind of gifts you like, the kind of gifts that you will never want to have. And then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and please get time and learn more Swahili from swahilipod101.com. See you then in our next lesson. Bye-bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.